Hi, this is Chris Matten from PwC reporting from ICBI Risk Mines in Amsterdam in December 2015. Uh, I'm joined this afternoon by Stefano Pasquale from Bloomberg. Stefano, welcome. Thank you. Um, so you were speaking at the conference earlier today, right? Yes. Oh, and you were speaking about liquidity risk, I think. Yes. Yeah. So maybe you could summarize what it is that you were talking about? Yeah, basically we are presenting uh, the research we've done in the last five years uh, mm. on uh, liquidity risk, uh, where we're basically trying to introduce innovative solutions to do a cross-asset class approach for liquidity, mm -hmm. leveraging uh, machine learning techniques now very famous in the financial world for, uh, in, this day, in this moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically I give, a, I give an overview on the model, very quick one, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, some use cases and application we are doing when uh, basically we went uh, with some of the research in the product uh, recently in the last six months. Mm -hmm. And now we are extending to other asset classes uh, this methodology. Okay, so you talked about research you've been doing over the last five years. Yes. What's the nature of that research? Basically we try, first of all, I, I used to say we try we, we did a step backward and tried to analyze the uh, state of the art of liquidity mm -hmm. uh, because uh, liquidity was uh, approached by regulators in a very quick way to, to come up with some solution, but there wasn't the proper research. So we literally spent two years closing the basement, cr cr crunching number, reading papers. Okay. We analyzed 345 papers and there we came up with the uh, weaknesses and strength of the different approaches. Mm -hmm. And uh, we basically built the uh, our solution. Our solution is basically, we didn't reinvent the wheel, but to what we did, uh, we tried to include uh, all the possible features that influence liquidity, not the traditional one like uh, within a spread, volume information, uh, by even characteristic of the bond uh, or an uh, equity, etc. To do this, uh, you end up with model with crazy number of variables. Mm -hmm. That's why we introduced machine learning to face this problem. Okay. And are we talking here about asset liquidity or are we talking about funding liquidity? So uh, asset liquidity. Asset so basically, we are talking about uh, if, I w if I own this position, I'm a bank, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fund, I want to liquidate this position. Mm -hmm. I evaluate my position at fair value price. My dream is to sell this position yeah, good now, luck. immediately yeah. in the market at yeah. this fair value price. Right. Actually, in reality, I have a cost liquidation. Mm -hmm or I need to take some time to uh, execute this transaction, we try to estimate the cost of liquidation and the time we're going to take to execute okay. this transaction. Okay, so you're looking at the liquidity of individual assets in particular markets, what sort of size you could sell yes. on any one day without influencing the price, those kind of things. Or if we influence the price to measure this influence. Okay, Excellent. And uh, clearly, and the other important thing is that we start at the security level mm -hmm. to do a strongly data-driven approach, but clearly the other important uh, innovation that we introduce, we keep the, the framework very general so it can be applied to bonds, equity, listed derivatives, in order to have a consistent framework across as a class, because when we're going to go to an aggregated portfolio level, mm -hmm. different model aggregated is like to aggregate peer and Apple together. Actually, we have a, if we have a consistent methodology, mm -hmm. the, the aggregated number of portfolio level will make sense. I was going to ask about that, because the normal approach that banks would take is they look at individual assets, and they may build some sort of liquidity estimate into their market risk models or something like that. But you, 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 you can do further than that. You can look at it not just at the individual asset class, but also at a portfolio level? Yes, we can, and actually banks uh, and mutual funds uh, in, the, in, the U in Europe and the US, they had to do, to the, they had to report to the regulator the portfolio level numbers. Right. So, for example, the new SEC requirements again came up in the US, asked the mutual funds to calculate the portfolio time to liquidation, mm -hmm. similar requirements in Europe for AMFD. So, the un solved problem was the security level number, but when you solve that problem, and we think we did, yeah. uh, you need to aggregate this and consider methodology. Mm -hmm. Now, the what they call the old-fashioned approach is to aggregate this using traditional methodology like variance covariance matrix. Right, so assuming static correlations, those exactly. kind of things. Yeah. And that one is uh, the, maybe the hardest task uh, in finance to come up with a reliable and credible uh, variance covariance matrix. Right. So because we build this concept of machine learning and clustering, we have this concept of connectivity, similarity between bonds, the comparable, and the comparable of comparable. So we can build this hierarchical structure of the portfolio looking portfolio from the similarity perspective. So right. I have two bonds that are very disconnected in our cluster machine learning mm -hmm. algorithms. They will not sell in one bond or the other, or an equity on the other will not impact uh, the other one. Right. If they are very close or overlapped, then obviously there's... There will be some kind of... So 
basically what we implement here is uh, we transform the portfolio in a kind of Facebook, right. where we are able to measure the direct and indirect similarity and connectivity between different bonds in the portfolio or equities, and we aggregate the portfolio. So Stefan, I think what you're saying here is that in, in a traditional variance, covariance type approach, if, if I have two banks which have essentially the same assets, but in, in a different combination, then when they're looking at the liquidity of the portfolio as a whole, they might assume the same sort of static correlation between those portfolios, but I think the approach that you're talking about says exactly. that they would come to a very different result, right? Because we are able to calculate uh, the grade of connectivity, similarity between all the possible uh, position the portfolio and the, the comparable one. Mm -hmm. So two bonds or two equity, they can be very similar or dissimilar, and after they can have comparables and they can share or not this comparable. So we have this uh, cross combination of similarity mm -hmm. and this specific on the portfolio. Okay. So that one, uh, and if you think about uh, our machine learning approach, is another way to attack the problem of correlation from a different perspective, where before we defined all the possible features that can drive similarity, mm -hmm. even not necessary numerical variables, but categorical variables, they are met together to define the similarity index. And after we can do a hierarchical structure of these portfolios with all the comparables and come up with the connectivity matrix. It's kind of we transform uh, uh, the portfolio in the concept of uh, such, a, uh, such a network. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much indeed. It's very interesting. Thanks, Stefano, so. thank you.